What's going on guys, welcome back, and today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now, uh, just to kind of give you a refresher of my thoughts on the 2017 Justice League, um, I remember really liking that movie back in the day, like, you know, four, four or five years ago, whenever that was, it feels like so long ago, but, um, that's when I was kind of in my less critical thinking phase, and I just thought all superhero products were good. And um, I look back on that movie now and, and think uh, it's not that great. You know, it's kind of a worse version of the Avengers movie, and there isn't a lot of thought put into the writing, and uh, it looks really ugly, and it's uh, it's not really a great movie in retrospective. Now... Was I really, like, one of the people really hyping up the Snyder Cut or whatever? The Zack Snyder's Justice League? No. I wasn't really a crazy hype fanboy about this stuff. Because, if you didn't know, I didn't used to like Man of Steel. I've said in the past that I don't like Man of Steel. And I do actually really enjoy Man of Steel now. Like, when I look back on it now, having rewatched it recently, I actually quite like Man of Steel. And I think it has a lot of interesting themes and concepts presented in it. Not all of them uh, stick the landing, but I still think it's a really thoughtful movie. And um, I appreciate it, at the very least. I think Batman vs. Superman is just a convoluted, messy horrible movie that has really nothing to say and uh it's not really going for anything interesting at all i think it's just a really messy movie and like it, the writing and everything about it just deludes the, the entire like anything that could have been taken away from it um so i'm not super into the Zack snyder movies i, I think he has a lot of traits or just things that i don't enjoy about him i, I just i don't really love the overall just dark dour depressing tone i just don't need that in a year like whatever 29 or 2020 and moving into 2021 now i don't really need that and i mean this movie does have a end on a hopeful note and it has a lot of like you know positive themes in it that aren't like as annihilistic as some of the themes in the other movies like batman versus superman man of steel man of steel has a more hopeful message but movies like batman versus superman and, and other films that Zack snyder's directed have rather nihilistic messages that i don't really love to take away uh and it's just not my type of movie it's not my cup of tea you know um and with Zack snyder's justice league it was okay. Um, it does feel like they expanded upon a lot of the things that were not covered in the 2017 movie, but it almost, some of those elements just kind of almost make the plot more convoluted. Like, one of these main uh, story beats that's fleshed out more is kind of the backstory, and how in the 2017 one, it was said that uh, Steppenwolf was the one that all the gods and everyone fought, but in this one, it's actually Dark Side or whatever. And um, he... They fight Darkseid, but they almost set up Darkseid to be, like, super weak because he gets beaten, like, by um, Lupin. And then it's like, oh, okay, and then he leaves. And then it's like, okay, Earth is the only planet where he ever lost and where he ever... Uh, it's the only planet that he ever lost and the only planet where the inhabitants ever fought back and the only... Yeah, like, and the only planet where he ever lost, but it was also the only planet where the anti-life equation was that he's looking for and all these other things combined. And somehow he just forgot about it. And apparently there's this legend that's well known about the one planet that fought back. And then Steppenwolf has to report back halfway through the movie and he's like, the planet that fought back is Earth. And it's like, oh, I guess Darkseid just forgot. And that's just a huge plot hole like in and of itself. It's like, how did you just forget? Like, if it's such a well-known legend, all these elements combined, the only planet that ever fought back that contained all these races of people combined, and the only planet that had the anti-life equation, and the only planet that you ever lost... It's like, how did you forget about Earth? It's really, like, stupid. Like, I know it's been, like, a millennia or whatever, but it's, like, it's kind of stupid. <laughs> so, like, the the kind of expanding on some of the flashbacks and stuff like that could potentially have been cool, but it feels like it's all flash and style over substance. And uh, for the most, like, for most of the movie... And that's just an example. Like, it feels like they tried to flesh out the backstory, but it feels like, you know, it's like a cool... It's a scene that, like, there's a lot of slow motion, there's a lot of Zack Snyder-y visuals, and, like, kind of, you know, stuff that people will like to look at, and it looks cool. But they, they, when you actually think about the writing, it's, like, really basic and, like, really convoluted, like, kind of just like the... <laughs> like, literally just like the... Uh, Batman vs. Superman movie. 
But I want to talk about the good stuff first. And I'll say kind of the stuff that most people have said. I think that Cyborg, Ray Fisher, he did really good in the movie. I think they really expanded upon his character a lot more. He was easily kind of the most boring, uninteresting part of the original movie. And, you know, you actually get a lot more characterization for him. You really feel for him. You understand where he's coming from. And he really does carry a lot of the movie. The story with him and his father uh, is takes... Uh, center stage a lot more in this film than I did in the Joss Whedon version and it um it did tug at my heartstrings a little bit like his father has this speech at the end of the movie that I won't spoil but it's really really kind of pulls at the heartstrings and that's kind of the heart of the movie and where like you know the positive message comes from um this movie which I appreciated that you know Zack Snyder actually portrayed a positive theme in the movie and uh, another positive theme does come with um, Barry Allen, or The Flash, uh, Ezra Miller's character. I really liked him. I found him kind of relatable in the original movie, and I enjoyed him, because I, I, I just enjoy, I guess, younger actors, even though I know Ezra Miller is technically, like, an older actor. I just like uh, younger characters. I mean, I'm, like, a teenager, so I can connect more with those characters, but, um, I, you know, he's he's a pretty funny character. I know some people kind of find him irritating, but in a way, I find him one of the more realistic characters, because all these other characters take things so seriously, and they're so, like, dour and depressing, and then just having a character being here, like, oh, it's the bat signal, oh, shit, sorry, like, stuff like that, it, it just kind of, if anything, it doesn't really pull me out of it, it actually pulls me into it more, because it's like a character that feels like he's kind of been, like, plucked out of the real world, and has been placed in these circumstances, and it just feels like... That's a more real, like that's probably how I would act if I was put in that situation. Like I would probably be kind of the comedic one, but I'd just kind of be like, okay, I have to kind of, <laughs> I have to kind of make a joke out of everything in order to kind of internalize all this crazy shit that's happening. And uh, I liked that. I think his character was very kind of realistic in that sense, and I found him very enjoyable to watch. And he also had probably the coolest scene in the movie um, toward the end, where spoiler alert, of course, he does kind of reverse time. And there's that really awesome line about uh, make your own future, make your own past. It's all right now. This is a really great line. This is a really cool scene. Um, and yeah, I really liked his characters throughout the movie as well. And um, yeah, like the, visually, it's an impressive looking movie. It does not look nearly as ugly as Joss Whedon's movie. Um, you know, obviously just kind of the grand scale and that sort of thing. It pulls me out of a lot of superhero stuff, and that's why this isn't my favorite thing. It's not my cup of tea, uh, and that's why I've been enjoying something that you guys recommended. Uh, my buddy Cool Israel Animations recommended I watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I really like the story of that show because it's about how normal people are affected by the, the, all these supernatural superhero events and how you know normal people don't get off scot-free, and I really like kind of stuff like that being portrayed in that show, and it doesn't even really feel like a superhero show, if you get what I mean. This very much feels superhero-y, it's larger than life, it's trying to be grand and epic, and in some ways I feel like it, it goes a little bit too far, and it thinks it's way more cool and thoughtful than it is. There are some nice messages portrayed, in, like I said, with Cyborg, but it feels like they're only surface level, and I think the movie feels like it's a lot more deep than it does, and that's a vibe that I get with a lot of Zack Snyder's work, like Batman vs. Superman, which is just a convoluted, messy movie, and I think he thought he was being way more intelligent with that movie than he actually was, and this movie does feel like, you know, it's just kind of another one of those movies that thinks it's way more thoughtful than it is, but... You know, I will admit it is visually pleasing to look at. All the shots from uh, Joss Whedon's movie that were, like, color-corrected and looked all weird. Um, and, like, yeah, the lighting and everything was changed, and it just looked unnatural. Here, it's shot a lot more naturally, and you can see where a lot of those shots were originally supposed to look like. And it does pull you more into it. It grounds it more in reality than that original movie, which just looked really sat oversaturated and weird. Um, and it feels like a lot of the shots here are placed better and they make more sense um and you know i will say it is a good thing that Zack snyder was able to release this movie you know it, i don't think it's really nice that i don't think it's overly nice that warner brothers um whatever took advantage of basically the fact that his daughter died and he had to step away and they were just like oh well we got to still release the movie anyway so then they just kind of like hacked away at his movie and got joss whedon to come in and take over the project but by doing so they just kind of made this weird frankenstein's monster of a movie um that really just kind of <laughs> messed up what Zack snyder had intended and uh I, I do kind of feel for him in that way i feel like he should have been allowed to kind of like make his own movie and not have it be like 
torn apart, basically. So it is good that, you know, it, it got released. And I know that a lot of um, charity was raised for a lot of people um, as a result of this movie being funded and all that. So a lot of good came out of this movie being released, just for people in real life and then for people who wanted to see the movie and for Zack Snyder as well, the fact that he finally got to release this. Um, and yeah, there's a credit at the end that says like for for um, Autumn or something, which is her his daughter that died um, back in uh, 2017, which is why I had to step away from the project. So I liked that. I really appreciated that um Thing there and yeah it, it, it's it's good that he was able to release this movie and it, i'm sure it kind of will act as a form of catharsis for him in a way um so that's good it's good that Zack snyder was able to release this movie whether or not everyone likes it um but i i still feel i still don't love it i it's, it's not really like i said it's not my cup of tea it's not my favorite thing in the world um and yeah, um, like I, I will also say, like the music was very good. It felt, um, I think it's Junkie XL or something who did the music, and a lot of the themes are based on like Hans Zimmer's themes for Superman and et cetera from the other movies. Wonder Woman has this really annoying theme throughout the movie that everyone's talked about, where it's like this music and it's like ah, and it's like it, it plays every time Wonder Woman walks on screen. And it's like really annoying. Um, so that's really frustrating. It's an, it's an, it's an interesting theme. Don't get me wrong, but the fact that they play it every time Wonder Woman does anything is like really annoying. Um, but yeah, I really like the score and, uh, the, the soundtrack, some, some tracks in there really remarkable. Like the one when the flash, um, runs back in time. That's a really, really nice track to listen to. I listen to that all the time. Um, but yeah, I guess now we'll kind of talk about the stuff that I didn't like so much. Um, and yeah, it does feel like it's bloated. It, it feels like they bloated up the runtime. They they drew they drew it out. There's a lot of shots and scenes where it's like you could have cut that back. Um, and it feels like in that regard, the original film from 2017 handled it better. Joss Whedon's version handled it better because there's a lot of scenes in here. Like there's a scene towards the beginning with the Flash and like a an intersection and there's these two people converging at this intersection and then there's this shot of this guy trying to reach for a sandwich and then as he's reaching for the sandwich like this cgi sesame seed flies into the camera as these cars are like crashing and it's just this close-up of a cgi sesame seed like flying towards the camera in slow motion and it's like why is that there that's like five seconds of the movie that didn't need to be there it's like, okay, I, I get that, you know, Zach wanted to kind of, you know, release the movie as he intended, but that <laughs> just feels like there's some of the stuff where it's like, you didn't have to do that. And it does feel like this is not what Zack Snyder would have released originally, and it that, like, there's a lot of stuff that um, he added in, like, in post. I know that he did a lot of free shoots, like the, final, like the final scene where it's like the nightmare or the vision of the future or whatever felt really tacked on. Um, it felt like the movie, like I thought the movie seemed like it was ending and then it just get, it just got dragged out for like 20 more, 15 to 20 more minutes at the end. It didn't need to be there. And I was like, Oh my goodness, when is it going to end? Cause like we, like it gets to the scene where the original movie ended and Superman like ripped open his shirt and there's the Superman logo, but then there were like 20 extra minutes in this version and it just went on forever and you have this 10 minute extended dream scene or whatever and i was like oh my goodness and then we cut back to current time and there's this martian man hunter dude who's apparently from the comic books and it just felt really tacked on like i see i've seen a bunch of people reacting on youtube to that who haven't seen like the or haven't read the comics they don't know who these people are and they're like who the frick is that and he appears halfway through the movie as martha kent which was really random and then he just appears at the end, and it's like, he's like, I'm here. And then Bruce Wayne's like, who are you again? And he's like, call me the Martian Manhunter. And it's like, oh my god. Like, to people who like the comic books, that was probably cool. But for me, I was like, who the frig is this guy? And it's really unnaturally placed in the movie. Like, maybe if they set him up earlier in the movie, like, showing up as Martha Kent to talk to Lois Lane, and then he comes in to help fight, what's his name, Steppenwolf, towards the end of the movie... But he doesn't. He just shows up in the last scene of the movie and talks to Bruce Wayne and then flies away. And I was like, that was really random. Like, that didn't need to happen. And, um, 
yeah, I really wasn't into that. They, they really dragged that out. And uh, just a lot of scenes there, like when the townsfolk are singing a song about Aquaman and even the opening scene with the credits, it's like t- t- like three minutes straight of Bruce Wayne walking over snowy mountains. And it really didn't need to be four hours. It feels bloated and dragged out and it feels like dragging itself out. It thinks it's a way more epic than it is. But it just really, it really didn't need to be that long. They really dragged it out. They're like Wonder Woman scene in the bank or whatever, really unnecessary really didn't need to happen um yeah and he should have really prioritized what should and shouldn't have been kept and uh rather than kind of dragging it out because people who are like snyder fanatics will probably love this but me not being a snyder fanatic i wasn't obsessed with it and he probably should have just kind of focused on what would have like what should have been kept in there for a like you know a a normal audience and i hope that someday they release like a different cut of this because like there's certain elements in this movie that i feel like are better than the original but then it just drags itself out and i feel like snyder should have prioritized what to keep in because it just feels like this is not like a, a a movie that's really marketable for a wide audience um, and I know that it's directed at most of the people who wanted to see, like, it's it's made for most of the people who wanted to see it and petitioned for it to be made, but for, like, a general audience, this is not really a watchable or rewatchable movie. I'll probably never rewatch it unless someone wants to watch it with me, because I can't see myself sitting through this movie again, especially considering how mediocre it really was. It's still, like, it, it thinks it's way more epic than it is, but it honestly is the same movie as the Joss Whedon version, just dragged out more with a little bit more characterization for people like Cyborg and The Flash. And other than that, it's just dragged out, and it's such a simple plot. It's basically like a worse... It's a short... It's like a longer, drawn-out, worse version of Infinity War, where it was like Thanos going after the Infinity Stones, but but this time it's Steppenwolf going after the Infinity Boxes or whatever. And it just felt really dragged out. Like, it didn't need to be as long. They should have prioritized what could have been kept, what couldn't have been... What shouldn't have been kept in... And, uh, and it's also just kind of hard for me to stay invested because it really does depend on you having been emotionally invested in a lot of the characters from like Batman versus Superman, which is a movie that I think is just really bad. And I just, I just wasn't really invested in those characters. Um, like Lois Lane, Martha Kent, I don't really care about them that much. So, you know, because like, I like them in Batman or in uh, man of steel and then Batman versus Superman. I feel like they really did a bad job with characters like that. And then it it depends on you having been emotionally invested in Batman versus Superman, and I wasn't. So it feels like in that sense, Joss Whedon's was a little bit more widely marketable to a like a you know just a, a full audience because that movie I remember watching it being worried it was going to be dependent on me caring about some of the characters like that, but thankfully it just kind of kept focus on what the general plot was, and it didn't really put in a lot of the unnecessary stuff or you know like um it was more marketable for like a like a wide audience and it wasn't just like focused on the snyder evil and i know this is focused on you know the people who are fans of snyder but i just i I could have done without some of it and um in that sense i think um the original movie did a better job because it is more um yeah like i said more marketable for like everyone and it just it didn't really, it could appeal to people who weren't really super fanatics of Snyder's past works, but it just, it it also, it also creates a lot of continuity errors for the franchise. Like Wonder Woman says, I lost someone and I cut myself off from society, but then we already have Wonder Woman two, where she's still saving people in the eighties and she clearly didn't cut herself off from people. So that is just kind of a contradiction. I don't think that's necessarily Snyder's fault. I feel like it's probably Patty Jenkins or Patty Jenkins' fault. Um, with Wonder Woman two, they kind of probably created that continuity error for themselves. I don't think Zack knew what they were doing with Wonder Woman two, but that's just a continuity error. Uh, what's her name? Amber Heard's character, uh, who knows Aquaman. She's in the Aquaman movie. Says that her parents are dead, even though they appear in Aquaman, and that's like a completely different backstory than what was introduced in the Aquaman movie. So that's just a plot hole and a a continuity error. And yeah, it just creates a lot of continuity errors and it feels like, um, it feels like the main kind of movie that's meant to be a part of the franchise is the original, um, Joss Whedon version because it feels like Aquaman and the rest of them kind of tie more naturally into that movie, but it feels like they just kind of changed a lot of stuff 
and this doesn't really fit well into the DC continuity. But honestly, I feel like the entire DC movie like continuity it has been so messed up at this point that it's just like <laughs> like there's so many contradictions happening in the franchise and it's like I mean Marvel is not a very consistent franchise either. I have to give it that. Marvel has a lot of plot holes and problems, but this makes Marvel look like a godsend because there are so many continuity errors in this franchise, and this only helps to continue the trend of continuity errors and problems. It's just a broken franchise, I feel. I feel like the DC franchise is broken at this point. Um, but yeah, I think I've touched on pretty much everything that I want to say. Like, it's just, it's not my cup of tea, you know? I, I'm not a super Snyder fan. I th- I'm glad that he was able to produce it. There were elements that I enjoyed, and it was at least watchable. I wanted to watch it so I could talk about it and uh, tell other people like how I felt. There were visually impressive scenes. There were nice messages throughout it, but still they're very surface level, and the plot just felt like it was meandering. It felt like it thought it was way more epic than it actually was, and um, it's just, it's not my cup of tea, like I said, it's its very much the stuff that I don't care to see in superhero movies, the larger than life, epic action, and spectacle, and it's not really my kind of thing anymore, uh, I, I'm far prefer what they're doing with stuff in Marvel, like Falcon and the Winter Soldier currently, because it feels way more grounded, it doesn't even really feel like a superhero show, uh, besides the fact that it's dealing with people who have been affected by superhero events, which I far prefer a message like that, or a theme like that, over just kind of the shooty shoot punch punch lasers that we've gotten in stuff like WandaVision and now Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, it's just a lot of the stuff that I don't really care for in the superhero genre. And uh, I'm sure that people who are Snyder fans and super DC fans and all this stuff and who know the comic books, I'm, I'm sure they'll be obsessed with this and they'll love this and they'll talk about it for years to come. But for me, it's just a longer, more mediocre version of the original version that was already very mediocre and, uh, yeah, I, I don't have a lot to say about it. Like, there were elements that I enjoyed. I feel like they probably should have made a different cut where it makes more sense. Like, I feel like there is a version where you could cut out a lot of the excess that makes more plot holes for the story and the continuity errors. And uh, you could just kind of, yeah, you could just cut a lot of the excess and stuff that you don't need. And you could just have a more narrative-focused one. Like, like that's more cohesive than the 2017 version, but has like some of these elements like cyborg and his whole story but also just cut out a lot of these continuity errors like the whole dark side stuff is just oh my god that's just full of holes so yeah i i you know i didn't love it i thought it was okay it's not my cup of tea um but you know if if any of you out there who are like huge snyder fans and you want to see this and you love all of Zack snyder's work um, you, I would recommend this for you. I think you'd enjoy it, and I think, like, you know, DC fans, comic book fans will enjoy it. But for me, it's just, it's, it had some okay stuff, but it's just more of what I don't care for in the genre, so it was okay. I don't really have a, ra- a, a like, a rating for it, because it's not even really a movie. It's, like, a huge event thing, so I'm not even going to really give it a grade. I'm just going to say comic book fans, Snyder fans, DC fans, you'll like it people who are getting sick of the genre and kind of tired of the tropes like I am, you won't love it. It's a very self-indulgent movie that thinks it's way more epic than it is. And I just don't love stuff like that. But I'm sure there, there, there are people out there, this movie's for them. It's just not really for me. So if you have seen Zack Snyder's Justice League, please let me know what you thought of it and what you thought of this kind of just thoughts review video as well. And uh, yeah, as always, I hope you guys have a great day. Take care.